Hi, I'm Ben Sayer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate a pedigree chart for a single line of descent. This sort of chart would be useful if you are applying for membership to a society like the Daughters of the American Revolution or Sons of the American Revolution. So the trouble with Family Tree Maker 2011 with the respect to a pedigree chart that shows only a single line or a descendant chart for that matter that shows only a single line is that it doesn't have a setting that allows you to uh, filter which individuals are to be included in that diagram. That means we need to start out by building a family tree file that contains just the people that we want to show in the pedigree chart. So let's say in this hypothetical situation, since I have not proven any connection to the revolution, American Revolution, let's say for this example that um, I'm going to use a more difficult one than just going along my patrilineal line. Let's say that uh, Henry Fraser Bigsby's uh, line here, that Amos Bigsby was a patriot what those societies would consider a patriot. And so I want to show the line of descent or the lineal line between me and Amos Bigsby. So let's start out by clicking on the file menu because we're going to export just a part of this family file. And then export. And we want to make sure that we have the output format set to Family Tree Maker. So this is essentially going to make the equivalent of a backup formatted file that's useful just for Family Tree Maker. And then we're going to want to check this little radio button next to where it says Selected Individuals. So I'll start by finding myself. And there I am. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as clicking Ancestors because you'll see that if I do that, I'm going to get 562 people, which is not limited in scope to just that one line. It's got a whole, all of my lines of, of descent, all the lines of descent that lead to me. And so that's not what I want. I'm going to exclude all of those. So unfortunately, that means we need to include people individually. So I'm going to include myself. And I've had a browse through my pedigree chart here on the family view and made a note of all of the names of the couples that led down to me from Amos Bigsby. So I need to select those. So let's start with the Bigsby's since they'll be all clumped together. And so Amos, of course, is the, the ancestor that we want to document connections down from. And then his son Albert. And it's not Albert Ellsworth, it's this Albert. You'll want to make sure you make a note of the, if you have uh, the same names, um, especially if this middle name had not been there. So I had two Albert Bigsby's. You want to make sure you make a note of the birth date so you know which one you're dealing with. In this case, it's this Albert. And then Henry Fraser Bigsby. And then Ralph Edwin Bigsby. So that's that patrilineal line that leads down. And now we need to put in the spouses. So Amos's wife was this, who I believe is Elmira Wheeler. And then Carr, Emmeline, this is Albert Bigsby's wife, and Sadie Emma Bigsby, Okay, so I've got 12 individuals. 
in that direct line of descent, I've got them all selected. I'll click OK. And so here we can see the list of individuals to be included, and I've got all of these thing, all of these options selected except for privatized living people. And again, the output format is set to Family Tree Maker. I'll click OK, and then I need to tell Family Tree Maker where to put this file and what to call it. So right now by default it's going to put it in wherever my Family Tree Maker folder is and that's okay with me. So I just need to name this file so it doesn't foul up the other files that I have there. So I'll uh, name it Amos Bigsby Line and then click Save. So you can see here this file type is a FTM package so it's got an extension of FTMB. So we'll click Save. And this will write out those files, that file. And then we'll click OK. And just to prevent confusion, I'm going to close this existing family file. So click on File and then Close. That will leave Family Tree Maker 2011 open, but without a family file loaded. And then I'll open up the one that I just, that backup that I just created. And here's a tricky part. You may notice if you look over here under Trees, that it still only lists the one Sayer Family Tree. Because Family Tree Maker doesn't recognize that file that we just saved as a tree yet, because it's in this backup format. Once we open this up, will be able to, it'll show up in that tree list. So the way to open it up, the trick is to click File and then Restore instead of Open. And then we select that file right here. And click OK, Open. And then it wants to know what we want to name this new family file that we're creating by restoring this backup. And so I'm going to leave it named the same thing and click Save. And here we go. So we've got only the people in that line of descent. You can see all these other boxes on this pedigree chart are now empty. So this will allow us to move to the next stage, which is to create the actual pedigree chart. And I'll do that by selecting the Publish view. And then the Pedigree Chart. You can click on this once and then go over and click on the Create Chart button over here. Or simply double click on the Pedigree Chart selection. And now we get the default settings for Pedigree Chart or you'll get whatever your last settings if you were just in Pedigree Chart. So we're going to want to make sure that we change these back to the default so that you're seeing the same settings that I am. So you can click on this Use Saved Settings button. And then make sure that the default template is selected and click OK. Now that will set all of your settings to look like mine. Now the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have the, all the generations present that we're looking for. And so in this case, it's 6. So I'm going to change the generations to 6 and the total per page to 6 as well. So now we can see that Amos Bigsby right there is included in this pedigree chart. The trouble now is that by including all that, it's truncating this information. If we look in closely here, we'll see that we're not getting all of the birth, marriage, and death information that these are overlapping and causing that to disappear. And so let's make some adjustments to make those things show up. The first step that we'll take to clear that up is to change this layout from book to poster. Now that will spread the chart across multiple pages. I'm going to zoom out here just so we see more of this at once and scroll down. So you can see now this is spread out all over the place. One of the next steps that we can take to make this better is to uncheck this box 
for this setting include empty branches. We don't need all this empty branch activity going on here. So by deselecting that, you can see now we've got information spread across only two pages. And none of the information is being truncated. Then the other thing that I want to change is the overlap setting. And I want to make that no overlap. So now all that information is cleanly presented here. And we have one other change that we need to make, and that is the information that's included here. We have birth, marriage, and death information, but there are no sources. So we want to include those. So we click up here on this button labeled Items to Include. And we want to make sure we check this box next to Include Sources. And then click OK. And now we have pages with the source. Now one other thing that we could do is we could change this page orientation to landscape and see if that helps us get everything on one page or not. And we do that here on page setup and right here under orientation. Let's see how that does. Now in this case, because I have six generations, it's still spreading it across the pages. If you have fewer, it may fit on there for you. So changing that orientation didn't help me at all. I'll change it back. Now if you had legal paper, changing the orientation and setting the size of the paper to legal may help you. In fact, let's try and just see what it looks like. We'll change it to legal and set it back to landscape. And no, it still spreads it across. If we were to change the page back to letter, now you could change it to a bigger size like a tabloid or 11 by 17 and then click OK and I'm confident now that that will all fit on there. Unfortunately the person receiving this file is unlikely to be able to print it to an 11, 17 by 11 or 11 by 17 piece of paper. So let's change the setting back to something they're likely to be able to use and portrait mode. And so now we have this spread across four pages, the di diagram itself across two pages and then the sources across two pages. The next thing we want to check here is this boxes overlap page breaks. You may have boxes like these that overlap, overlap the page breaks and that makes it hard to read so you'll want to make sure you uncheck that to clear up that problem. Now that didn't make any change for me because none of my boxes overlapped, but it's a good thing to check and, and clean up. So now if you were to print this report and send it off to the society, they would be able to view this direct line of descent down from, in this hypothetical case, Amos Bigsby, all the way down to me and including the sources. Now that we have it set the way that we want, we can either print it by clicking print on the toolbar and selecting the printer or PDF converter that we wanted to send it to, or we can use the share options to export it to different formats and to send it 